Morning guys, it's Saturday morning and I'm looking forward to getting out on location and shooting some film on my Pentax Spotmatic F camera using some Ilford FP4 black and white film. I've already seen a, a scene near where I live on the Isle of Wight in the UK and I'm looking forward to shooting this, this scene. I've got a vision of it. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go out on location and uh, set up. Um, but I'm not gonna, I've got 24 exposures on this film, so I'm not gonna um, be, be shooting the whole 24 exposures. I'm probably gonna shoot five. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna meter up, get my first shot, and then go two stops over, two stops under for various exposures. I'm gonna come back in the dark room, take the film out, take what I need, and put the rest of the film back in for another day. So I'm only gonna develop what I've shot. I quite like doing it that way sometimes because then I don't, you know, I'm not waiting around to, to use the rest of the film up or just start shooting anything. Really, I just want those photographs out of the camera. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so yeah, gonna come back, develop the film, print the photograph, mat the photograph and then frame the photograph and then stick it up on the wall there behind me. This come through the other day, some uh, 10 by eight Ilfords. I've got five sheets free. I've got one or two lenses I'm gonna use. It's either this 50 mil lens here, which uh, is a Pentax SMC Taku Takuma lens, or I might use this 28mm Hanamex lens, which is a blinding little lens. I like it, it's nice and sharp, nice and wide. So when I get down to the location, I'll decide which way I want to go 50mm, or, or if I want to do a wide shot at 28. So um, anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to grab my hat, grab my coat, grab my camera bag, get down to the beach where I'm going and uh, I'll see you down there. Here we are at the Avalon Beach on the Isle of Wight. I've got my hands in my pockets because it's bloody freezing down here today. And I've got the beanie on my head. Uh, this is a lovely beach, only about 10 minutes from where I live. Um, and the conditions are quite cool today for taking photographs. But it's not here where I'm going to be taking a photograph. It's over there. And I'll take you over and show you. And this is what I want to take photographs of, is this bench right here. But we're not going to be taking photographs from this angle. We're going to do, be doing it from over there. And hello, all right. <laughs> I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Bless them, it's just some people walking past. Um, so yeah, going to be taking photographs from over there. And I've been driving past this road for years. I've always thought this would make an interesting picture. So uh, in a moment, we're going to go over there and get a film camera out. And, uh, and shoot this scene from behind the bench, and I'll show you why I like it. So it, here it is, this is the scene that I want to be shooting. I've got to be careful, this is a road. But you can see these parallel lines on the walls here, the wall there, the bench. Everything's, everything's horizontal. So um, yeah, let's get the, uh, the Pentax out. Another car coming. Let's get the Pentax out and do some photographs. Okay, so I've got the... Uh, the Pentax Spotmatic on the tripod there, it's looking at the scene. So uh, the light meter's shagged in it, so I'm gonna, I haven't got a light meter on me, so I'm going to use my DSLR to take a light meter reading of the scene, a spot meter in, and uh, take a photograph on the DSLR as well, just to see how it comes out. Okay, so we're all set up. Um, from the DSLR test shot, I'm going to set my aperture to f11 and keep it at f11. And my shutter speed, I'm going to start off with the uh, slowest shutter speed first, which is going to be 30th of a second. And then the next shot will be 60th, the next one will be 125, the next one will be 250, and the next one after that will be 500. So there's my five shots. And I'm doing it in that order so that I know the first frame that I look at is going to be 30th of a second and upwards, so I won't get confused which is where. I could write them down, but get my composition right and take the first shot. Get my uh, 
focusing, which is pretty much infinite. Uh, through the viewfinder, I could see a white line of the road, the road line, the central line. So I'm going to keep that in. In fact, it's not really central. No, I'm going to keep it out. Okay, the bench looks dead centre. Let's take our picks and see what we got. Advance the film, 30th of a second, F11. I'm going to use the timer because I don't want to jog the camera. Okay, first shot coming up using the timer. There's a car coming, I hope the timer beats the car. Just going to make it, I think. Yep, Ricky, there it goes. Second one is going to be a stop up at 60th of a second. Again, I'm going to use the timer. Second shot done. Okay, this is 125th of a second. This is our pretty much starting point. This is where I think the best exposure will be. 250th of a second. I'm lucky I might even get a seagull in the shot. And the last one is 250th of a second. There's a lady just walking, uh, 500th of a second, sorry. There's a lady walking past. I don't need the timer for this because it's going to be fast enough. It's certainly faster than that lady walking past with the pram. She gone? She's gone. Okay, last shot coming up. And that's it. That's our five shots. So this was my planned shoot. I don't want to shoot anymore. I just want to get back and develop this film and see what I've got. Stick the rest of the film in the, uh, in the camera for another day. So let's get back to the dark room and see what we've got. I'm back in my room now and uh, warming up. It was pretty cold down there. Uh, last thing to do before I develop or take this film out is I just want to advance it by a couple of frames because just in case one of the last shots is still sitting there. One, one more, two. So now I'm ready to open the camera, take what we've shot out, uh, put the rest of the film back and then develop the, uh, the strip that we, that we took the photographs on. So uh, let's crack on with that. Okay, so that part I couldn't show you. Obviously it had to be in complete darkness, not even with the safe light on. It has to be done in complete darkness. All the lights were turned off and uh, I opened the back of the camera and um, where I um, advanced the film a few, a couple of frames forward, I knew that I was safe to cut. And once I cut it, I took the film out, pulled the strip of film that we'd used down the beach, put it inside the developing tank, kept that enclosed, that's done. And, uh, and I've got the rest of the film there, which is probably about another 15 shots or so on there, that I'll use another day. Pop it back inside the canister. I'll use that another day, close the pen tacks up, put that back on the shelf indoors, and uh, now next to develop this film and see, see what we've got. Got my chems mixed up now, so this is the uh, developer, this is Rod Knoll I'm using, this is Stop Bath, this is Fixer, this is from Photospeed and this is from Photospeed. The developer is mixed at uh, uh, 1 over 25, so I've got um, 400ml of, of water in there and 16 mil of the developer Rodnell and the Ilford FP4 recommend nine minutes but I'm going to go for seven and a half minutes it's always worked for me so that's that's where I'm going to go so I'll put a developer in first and then I'll hit the button and do the seven and a half minutes I haven't pre-washed the film sometimes I do sometimes I don't I didn't in this case don't see the need to really medium formats I do I don't know why Start that now and just agitate for the first five seconds. Three, four, five. Give it a little tap. And I'm going to skip this part now so you guys probably know what I'm going to be doing developing, then stop, and then fix, and then I'll wash the film and we'll see what results we've got.
Okay, so I'm now back in the dark room ready to make the print. Um, everything's in place and I've checked the negative. There's a negative now sitting in there. The best exposure, I've already put it on the light box. I'm not going to put it on the video, but I've already looked at it and evaluated that the 60th of a second shot was the, looked like the best exposed. So that's the one we're going to go with. And I'm uh, going to be using, as we said, Ilford 10 by 8 resin paper. Uh, and I'm going to be making a 8x8 print, which is going to go inside a 20x20 frame. So in order to make this 8x8 print, I've had to use one of my masks. Here it is here. So I'm going to be printing, and after the mask, I'm going to be putting the aperture back inside so we can get a nice little black border just to finish the print off uh, and make it look nice inside the frame. So let's uh, turn the enlarger on, have a look and uh, on, at the image on the baseboard, do some test strips and see, see how they look. Okay, so here's the image now. You can see, if I just pull the bars off the um, negative carry, you can see the rest of the neg. So this is our, our full frame 35mm, but we're coming in to fit inside this 8x8 square. Uh, let's put the bars back on our carrier, so we don't see them parts. Okay, and the way I've framed it, i framed the bench just slightly, I've given it more sky, and I've framed the bench kind of down here. Uh, the bench is dead center and the most important part is the horizontals as well. I want them to be not wonky whatsoever. They've got to be dead straight, which they are. So let's uh, do some test strips and see how it looks. Okay, so these are my first two test prints that I did. The first one, I did in increments of three seconds. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. Three, six, nine. This area here was best for me. So I chose 10 seconds on the second test print, which is there. And to me, that's fine. I like it. I've got some, I've got detail here. This is dark here, but I've got detail on the step of the wall. Um, so I'm going to do a larger test print at 10 seconds. Okay, so this is our third test print. And from this, obviously, I can see a bigger picture. Um, I'm happy with the overall 10 seconds. Uh, this area here, this area, I'd like to lighten this, this here, which is a path. It's kind of like a path where I was uh, next to in the video. Here, I want to try and lighten that. So I've just cut a piece of mat board, and I'm going to just dodge that area on, under the enlarger. And then what I'm going to do is gradually um, burn the sky in here. So we're, we're going to kind of leave this area, but blend the sky in so we get this more dramatic effect. So let's put another piece of paper on. Uh, I'll leave the camera on this time while I'm doing the dodging uh, and burning and you can see uh, what I'm up to. Okay so hopefully you can see this. I'm going to turn the um, enlarger on for 10 seconds. First three seconds I'm going to uh, dodge the uh, just underneath the bench like we said. So let's turn it on and here we go. One, two, Three and off. I noticed I uh, kind of blended it there by raising it a little bit, just it blends in. Uh, last part now is the to do the sky. You can see that. Okay, let's uh, put this in the developer and I'll show you the results after. Okay, and uh, I've just developed, stopped and fixed the print and you know what when I frame it I've got nothing here I've got nothing here for the uh, to, to stick on the so I'm gonna have to turn the mask around and do another print this way around so that when I frame it I've got some uh, 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 clear paper there to stick the print in with otherwise I'm not gonna be able to do it that way so I'm gonna do another print um, I'm not gonna bore you with that one but uh, I'm gonna go straight into the framing next and, uh, and get this print matted, framed, and up on my wall, as I said. So there you go, yesterday was really worthwhile. It was a photograph that I'd been meaning to get for many years, and yesterday was, was perfect time for me to go and get it on 35mm, 8x8 print in a frame, 
and uh, I'm really happy it's now on the wall in my home. So as always, thanks very much for watching. Uh, please like this video, uh, share it with your friends or whoever, and uh, don't forget to subscribe as well if you haven't already. Thanks very much, really appreciate it. See ya.